Hello and welcome to the live streaming for musicians hosted by Switcher Studio here at the Switcher Studio Facebook page. Uh, I am Mark Goeth. I am the Vice President of Sales and Business Development um, at Switcher Studio. And I have a very exciting guest for uh, all of you today. I'm super excited to have him on the show. Um, I've known our guest Dan Schinder for a little over uh, maybe actually close to two years now. Uh, it's amazing how time flies. But uh, um, from the from the moment that I met Dan, I knew that uh, um, he's a very smart individual uh, from a video production uh, standpoint and also from a uh, uh, musician standpoint. So I want to tell you a little bit about Dan and then I'll bring him on. Uh, so Dan Schinder has been a musician since 1970 and first toured the entire U.S. professionally when he was 15. Uh, he discovered his love for video production when he had a cooking show on TV from 2002 to 2006, and then went on to produce corporate videos with Fortune 500 companies, major banks, documentaries, and short films. Dan provides social media marketing education, training, and consulting in and outside the music industry to everyone from solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, startups, multi-million dollar corporations, and non-for-profit organizations in person and online with clients in 20 different countries. And he's also the founder of Drum Talk TV. So please help me welcome uh, to the show, Dan Schinder, everyone. Hey, Dan, Hello. how you doing? Great, Mark. How are you? Wow, it has been about two years. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm good. Um, you know, I was reading that uh, that little intro there, and uh, one thing I did not know about you was you had your own cooking show. So I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about that later. But uh, um, the topic of today's conversation is live streaming for musicians. Um, you know, you and I have had numerous, numerous conversations about uh, you know live streaming for musicians, uh, how musicians can uh, you know can leverage social media, especially right now with everything that's going on with COVID and shelter in place and not being able to get out and tour, right? Um, you know, so um, you know, first off, I'd like you just to tell us a little bit more about yourself, uh, you know, your music background, and then we can kind of dive into the meat and potatoes of this uh, of this conversation. Okay, cool. So, first of all, thanks for having me. I know we've been talking about this for a while, and uh, I love talking about things that I love, so I'm eager to get to the part of the discussion where I kind of expand on my thoughts on Switcher Studio and the youth for musicians, whether they're performers or teachers. But, yeah, I started playing drums when I was uh, – right when I turned seven years old, and – for the first uh, seven years, it didn't occur to me that that could be a job or a career. I actually wanted to be the next Jacques Cousteau. I wanted to be an oceanographer, a scientist. I think it's no coincidence that my mother made sure my first two initials are DR for doctor. <laughs> and so uh, that was going along pretty well, actually. I used to watch everything Jacques Cousteau put out, I used to draw cross sections of submersibles and things. I even took some oceanography classes uh, in summer school, starting with um, junior high. But then something happened that changed everything. My dad took me to see Led Zeppelin in 1977. And by the third song, I thought, wait a minute, you mean this could be a job? And there went oceanography. As disappointed as my mother was, a year later, exactly a year later, she found an audition for a singing group that needed a drummer that was going on tour in two weeks. And she took me to that. I never even played. Um, the, the music was kind of like Neil Diamond, Barbra Streisand, Linda Ronstadt, you know, that sort of thing. And the director, I watched them rehearse with the drummer who was leaving in an empty theater. And the director came over and said, so what do you think? And I I, I, oh, I told my mom, mom, I don't want to play this kind of music. I was playing Zeppelin, Deep Purple, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, Genesis, yes. She grabbed me by the shirt and shook me and said, you say you want to be a professional musician. Who cares what kind of music it is? They're going to pay you to see the country and play music. And, and I realized, oh, yeah, wow. So the guy came over and said, so what do you think? And I wasn't thrilled. But I said, oh, yeah, yeah, it's good. He said, so you know, tell me about yourself. What do you play? I told him the kind of music I played and he didn't even ask me to go up there and play. He said, so you, do you want to do the tour? And I said, yeah. And uh, he asked my mom, my mom said, well, let me talk to dad. And 
they said okay and that was my first paid professional gig was opening for bands like the Osmond Sticks, Heart, Blue Oyster Cult when I was 15 years old. Got bit wow. by that bug hard and I've been a musician my whole life. Funny thing is that I did not start Charm Talk TV till three months before I turned 50. <laughs> so January of 2013 is when I started Charm Talk TV. Um, prior to that, I was a video guy. I had a video production company for 14 years doing video marketing before those words were even put together. Um, I was doing corporate videos, as you mentioned in the intro, stuff like that. But what got me into video was I had an idea for a cooking show. I didn't know how to sell that idea or bring it to a network. So I just said, ah, I'll just do it. So I was living in Ventura, California. I got with the community access television station, joined, got certified in using their camera equipment, their editing stuff. And then I hired people who knew a lot more than I did to do that stuff and help me with it. And I, I believe it or not, I'm, well, you, you've known me for like two years. Would you believe that I'm actually an introvert? And those who know me from Drum Talk TV would never believe that, but I'm, I'm pretty shy. But I knew when I did my cooking show, I had to throw the switch and really engage the viewers and suck them into the TV. And that's when I opened up and it's when I fell in love with video. And Mark, when I think of the boxes and boxes and boxes of mini DV tapes that I have and the countless hours of post-production that I put into that show, all the corporate stuff I did, even Drum Talk TV for the first six years until we started doing things live. And I wish we had something like Switcher Studio where A, we weren't using tape, it was recording to the web or recording to a hard drive or a chip or whatever, but also the major advantage, whether you're using five cameras or one, using Switcher Studio to fly in graphics, as Ryan was showing in the demonstration, you know, fly in titles and graphics and lower thirds and cut in images, cut in B-roll. It's just been a, a game changer. I always describe it as it's like having a production truck in your hands it's it's truly amazing it's a great product and i like to tell people it's so easy a drummer can do it so if i can do it <laughs> and my wife who runs it when we use it actually yeah. i don't she does um it, anyone can use this and and it's i recognize right away you know we use it as a media company to broadcast interviews we shot two documentaries in japan last fall and one in singapore and one in Singapore the year before that, streaming live eight hours a day for four days. And it, it was just great. And then I really started to think from the perspective of a music educator, from the perspective even before COVID, just being able to stream concerts or film them because you can record with Switcher Studio with uh, multi iOS devices and Switch and everything else, save that file. That, I, I can't tell you how many hours I have in post-production uh, from stuff like that previously. So it's truly an amazing product, and I'd, I'd love to talk more about how educators really should be using this. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I definitely want to uh, want to get to that. But there's a question that just came up uh, as you were talking about that. It's one that I had prepared and uh, it's actually kind of a perfect segue. So I appreciate it. We haven't rehearsed this at all. And everyone right. this is live. So, um, you know, you talked about, um, you know, what you, what you did 15 years old, going to that audition, you know, et cetera. There was no such thing as um, you know, highlight reels or demo reels, right? At that point, it was not, I mean, maybe audio, there was no such thing as a video reel. Right. You know, back oh, then. Yeah. So, there um, wasn't even like VCRs or v home consumer VHS cameras back then. This is 19, the summer of 1978. Okay. So, one of the things that, uh, you know, um, you know, to basically look back, one of the things I'm interested in is what would a tool like Switcher Studio? have done for a musician, 15 years old, 15 year old Dan Schinder, what would a tool like Switcher Studio have done for getting, you know, you mentioned that you didn't want to play that kind of music, but what would it have got you access to play a different kind of music? Um, you know, just curious, like if you were to, you know, know now, what, you know, know then what you know now, what it, you know, what could you possibly have done with a tool like, uh, with a solution like this? 
Wow. Well, what I would have done is if my mom had come to me and said, hey, do you want to, I found this ad, check it out. If you want, I'll take you to the audition. I would have had my cameras set up around my drum set. I would have sat at it, blasted some music. I would have told my mom or dad at the time or little sister how to work Switcher Studio. And I would have had, I would have said, I'm going to play, just switch around. You know, I would have programmed uh, Dan Schinder, 15 years old, demo video. And I would have played some stuff and downloaded that recorded file that maybe was five minutes long, showing me playing some different things with the graphics. I would have had it on hopefully a device, something like this. And when the guy said, so tell me about yourself, I would have said, here, watch that. And that, that would have been it. it. It had been, you know, what, what even takes a lot of people right now, hours and hours and hours to put together. If they're filming something, then they got to upload it to their hard drive, throw it in Premiere or Final Cut, put text on screen, edit out the stuff they don't want. And then you got to process it. It takes hours to do the stuff that you can now really do live if you've got someone behind the switcher that knows how to use it and you pre-program all the text and fly that stuff in. There's cool, there's amazing transitions to go from shot to shot. Um, there's picture in picture. So for you drummers or musicians out there, even music fans, if you know Good Times, Bad Times by Led Zeppelin, it's the most seminal single bass drum playing song ever. If Aliens landed here and said, what's the most amazing single bass drum song? You put that on. And John Bonham's doing this with one foot. And I can have one camera on a tripod like this down by my bass drum showing that while the bigger picture is showing me on the kit, and then my wife can reverse that, so the close-up on the foot. I mean, it's, it's that's the tip of the iceberg when it comes to education, which we can get more into it. I'm not doing education. I'm just screwing around on Dan's almost daily blog and talking live on the comments through Facebook Live with the audience, having fun. But for serious educators, which I used to do, you know, you can, uh, let's just take, We'll get back to drums, but for a guitar player, have one close-up camera on the fretboard, have one close-up camera on finger picking or, or the pick, and have a wide shot so you can talk into that and explain. Now let me show you how that finger picking goes. Cut to that close-up shot of the fingers. Same thing with piano, with saxophone. I mean, anything. And imagine, for those of you who don't play drums, imagine what goes on in that cockpit especially with a big drum set like mine. I got a stupid big drum set. I love playing progressive music, so I got all these extra cymbals and textures and sounds and size drums from 8 to 18 inches, timpani drums. And to have cameras where you could see into my drums and show the foot pedal like I mentioned, and to be able to teach with that or even for a concert video and with COVID not being able to tour and stuff, you, you band's got to be getting this product setting up even if it's remotely but set set up and stream a multi-camera shoot train someone on your one of your roadies or your girlfriends or or your wife but don't tell your wife you taught your girlfriend how to do or however it works out for you get to teach them to switch around the cameras the guitar player takes a solo switch to that guy drummer's doing a killer feel switch to that girl you know whatever it is it's it's people are really missing out on this especially People are watching more videos than ever. And think about this. The numbers have grown since 2017, but in 2017, video on social media drove 70% of all online sales. So for you musicians who want to sell swag, who want to sell lessons, who want to sell your CDs, DVDs, your upcoming gigs after the holidays, hopefully, this is the tool to make videos that look like you have a team of 14 people putting all this together it's it's great it really is all right and with that guys we're done no i'm just kidding like that was i mean that was such a great uh, no that was a great uh you know great um product pitch and you know just description uh you know and, and this is one of the reasons i wanted to have you on here because you have used the product i think to its fullest potential uh you know you've done it at your home in arizona you know in your studio but um, talk a little bit about what you did overseas, um, you know, because we think about video production and you think about, oh, yeah, you, you're in a place, you're locked down, you've got your camera shot set up and that's all well and fine. But you did some amazing things with this product 
in Singapore and in Japan, and you did have uh, a an M1, so you had one of these uh, that you took over there, you know, for your for your internet. But uh, you know, I remember seeing one of the videos that you did. Uh, it was like a drum off with uh, with some fairly young drummers, um, yeah. and you know, you had three cameras or four cameras set up around that stage, and you were you were live switching that whole thing in. Yeah. In Singapore, so you know, tell me a little bit about that because uh, you know I think I think that's the other you know that is the other kind of piece of this puzzle with Switcher is it's great you know you can set up your cameras in your studio and your home studio you know wherever you're at but you also can throw those in a backpack and you can go you know to gigs you know you can go on the road and you can you can stream that same stuff that you're per that you're performing in person hopefully right you know for a you know for an audience you can also make it available externally so you know talk to me a little bit about that. Okay, we'll go from Singapore to Japan to the NAM show because there are three different scenarios in which we used it yeah. in a mobile situation. And I wish I had one of the cameras here, but I use uh, we use iPad Minis. Um, we just got our first full size iPad Pro, but we've been using iPad Minis. And in Singapore, it was it was on location away from home, obviously. It was in a set location every day. Uh, this year, it was done inside a very busy fashion mall. And if there's one thing, one thing that Singapore's are great at, and they'll be the first to tell you, it's shopping. The stores there are amazing. The malls there are incredible. So we're in this, uh, this, this big open spot of a mall that's four floors high. And all four floors wrap around this opening. So people are stacked four floors looking over down at this event that had a stage with four drum sets and a big percussion rig with a lot of Latin percussion instruments, congas, bongos, timbales, go-go bells, wood blocks, all that kind of stuff. And it's a competition that was four days long, four or five days long. Don't remember now. Uh, it's all such a blur. But what we did is this. My wife has really gotten good at working the switcher. So she worked the switcher. And what we did each day had maybe two or three age categories. And then they get judged by a panel of professional judges. And then that narrows the field down as we go. And the last day is the championship. It's down to two people for each age category. So what we did was we had five, we had five cameras maybe six because my wife had a wide shot of the stage. And if the, if the um, contestant was going to be on the drums, looking at the stage on the far left, she'd be focused on that and, and kind of zoomed in. And I would have two cameras already set up on the next drum kit. And I'd have these two cameras on the one being played. And I had a, mobile i was i think using my phone or another ipad as mobile so i can like move around the drummer and and show neat stuff so it's not just static shots and she's just switching from shot to shot we have the judge's name so that after that person performs and they're being reviewed she swings the camera and has a nice shot of the panel of like 10 people i think famous drummers and uh jared falk from drumeo and she knows who's who, and she taps on their name, and their name comes up on a lower third, the contestant's name. We load all this stuff in the night before each day. And then I would, uh, so they'd say, okay, thank you. Actually, while they're reviewing that contestant, I'm taking those other two cameras to the, not the next kit, but the one after that. The next kit's already set up, and now I'm over there with the mobile one. And we just kept kind of leapfrogging all along, and. And then we also used um, those cameras to shoot just footage of Singapore, the architecture, the food, and you know I, I put together a piece. So that's how we used it in a fixed location. In Japan, when we went there, it was for two separate things. They were both Taiko events, but one was private, put on just for us. But the first one, is called Earth Celebration. It's, it's a big, it could, it's very hippie-ish, artsy-fartsy festival on Sato Island, which is in the Sea of Japan. So we had to get there 
in Tokyo, got there at nine at night, spent the night, got up early, got picked up, took a car to a taxi, to a bus, to a hot air balloon, to a hang glider, to a train, to a ferry, to the island, basically. And where we stayed was about a mile from the location, this big festival grounds. And, and I hadn't been there. And I, I had it described to me as much as possible, but it was one of those things where I didn't know where or how we were going to be set up until we actually got there and scoped it out, which, which is always weird to me because I'm just so used to knowing stuff ahead of time. I'm a planner. You know, I like to plan ahead of time. When you have 11 kids and 19 grandkids, you tend to plan a few things out, right? So <laughs> true story. So we got there the day of, and I said, okay, here's what I want to do. I want to put, um, what did we do? We had, I want to put two cameras on this side, and that'll be me and this person, and then Anja, my wife, you'll be where we are, but way on the other side. The stage is like 70 feet wide. So my wife is way on the other side in this roped off area for photographers. And we're, so she's on the left side facing the stage. I'm on the right with, with another person. And she, bless her heart, was tasked to work two cameras. One was a wide shot and the other one right next to it, she can swivel and move and zoom right. in. And I was switching live from my camera and Kiara, another person we had was working another static camera next to me. And we, we had a thing worked out where I said, I'll get wide from the, no, I said, you get wide from this side and I'll get all the close-ups." and then just getting both from that side and I'll do all the switching. So we streamed all this live, but then we also, um, this is a very famous place in Japan where um, the Chinese, was it the Chinese, North Koreans came at some point and took a bunch of families for slave labor. I mean, there's got a lot of history here. And so we, in our spare time, our little bit of spare time, we toured these little villages and, and nabbed up tons of B-roll. So what I was able to do is all those live streams that we posted live to Facebook, after we got home, I was able to download those files. I could have saved them, but I needed to keep space clean for processing and all that. I downloaded all those files, uploaded all the B-roll stuff into one hard drive and then made the documentary that you can find on all our Drum Talk TV channels. It's called, um, it's called Drum Talk TV, what's it called? It's called, so if you look up Drum Talk TV, Kodo, that's K-O-D-O, -O, that's the name of the most famous Taiko group and and that's what we were filming their three performances each night and each performance was completely different the first night they had the younger group and the apprentices the second night they had the veterans and um another taiko group joined them from south korea and then everybody on the third night so totally different performances and then we put together it's basically a travel show based around taiko drumming then when we were done with that we were taken to another region called Kochi, which is a real remote agricultural area. Same thing, we, we had a private performance at the rehearsal space, which was basically a big garage full of percussion instruments, Japanese percussion instruments on a farm. And I did an interview with the founder of that. And then we, for three or four days, toured 800 year old castles, art, um, galleries, uh, botanical gardens. Every time we ate, we took video and pictures and did a whole separate documentary on that. And this is all using Switcher Studio stuff. We also streamed live the private performance they gave us, the interview, and then I stitched all that together after we got back with B-roll stuff. So those, those are two different elements, three, if you count the two in Japan and Singapore, how we used it abroad and mobile and totally blind, just not knowing like, couldn't figure it out till we got there. If you have, if you want to ask any questions, and then I'll explain how we use it at the Nam Show. Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, one of the things that I find so um, you know powerful about that story, you know, it, it's not necessarily the you know the multiple cameras, uh, you know, the production stuff. Although you know that stuff is is amazing, but it's the fact that you. You know, because I remember having this conversation with you. We got you set up with Switcher Studio like a week before you left for, wow. uh, you know, right. it, was, 
it was very, very shortly before you left uh, on that trip. And then you know, you're, gotta, you're like, hey, we'll figure it out. You know, and yeah, you know, I, you, yeah famous last words by this idiot. But I, I got to tell everybody. So Mark's right. It was real close to us leaving. I figure how hard could it be? I, I'm a kind of a techie guy. I know video. And so now being in Japan, we were um, 16 hours ahead of where Mark is in Pacific time. 16 hours ahead, and I've got questions up the gazoo, and I'm texting him from Japan, bugging him at crazy hours, and and I gotta say, I, I'm a I'm a I'm a customer support person. I actually ran a customer support department for a huge call center once upon a time, but I'm big on customer support. And and Mark, you were so available. I know I drove you nuts with the craziest, most simplest questions, but I didn't have time to really learn this stuff. Yeah, you can learn it on the fly. I don't want anyone to be scared, but I kind of took it. I didn't just take it and eh, let's try it with a couple cameras at our place. It was like, okay, we got this. We're going to Japan. We're going to shoot somewhere. We never shot something we've never seen before. It was like every unknown was in this experience. And I forgot that it was, yeah, like a week or so before we left. That's crazy. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was obviously very, uh, you know, very short learning curve, uh, you know, and, um, you know, I did, I did help out as much as I could, uh, you know, with all of that, you know, with the, with the time difference. But, you know, that was one thing that really surprised me about it is, you know, seeing some of the productions that you guys, you know, ultimately pulled off, you know, there and, and being able to tune in and watch that live from, you know, like you said, 16 hours away and, and see some of the things that you were doing, you know, with this product that you had just had, you know, fresh in your hands, you know, uh, for, for all intents and purposes, uh, you know, it was a fairly new product. And I thought that was, you know, super, uh, you know, super intriguing. Um, I know that, uh, you know, we don't have, you know, a ton of time left, but I do want to hear, you know, shortly about the, the NAM show and kind of some of the stuff that you've done there, because this, you know, all of these stories really help to highlight for musicians, you know, this isn't something where, you know, you are just locked down, you know, you're, you're mounting cameras to the wall, you know, you've got these locked down. And then, you know, if you want to travel with this, then you got to go out and buy 27 more Pelican cases on top of what you already have, or, you know, you know, travel cases. This is something literally that I can throw three full-size tripods, my iPad, you know, four or five, uh, you know, iOS devices into a backpack and I can go do you know, a, a professional setup. So, you know, that's ultimately what I'm trying to, you know, to get everyone to visualize here is this thing is super mobile. It's super, you know, mobile friendly. Uh, it can be used in a, you know, in a lockdown setting, but it can also, you know, be, you know, torn down, right. And, and moved, you know, moved all over the world, you know, as, which is evident thing. by this. Yeah. That's the thing, Mark. That's a great point because it's, it's mobile. It's as mobile as your iOS devices because it's invisible. You don't have to buy a separate proprietary piece of gear that you got to cart around with you and the iOS devices. So the iPad minis, darn, I should have had one up. They're really small. Oh, I do have one. Hold on. It's just not. So normally we have them in a, in a little rubber case, but you know, this is small. They're thin. They're only twice as thick with the rubber thing on it. Get six, six of these in a backpack. And here's these tripods. Are, we took these all over the world with us. They're 10 bucks. They last a year or two. If they break, you spend another 10 bucks. Three of these and easily three of these with a bunch of cables, your ATT device that you showed, the Google Puck, all this stuff, like Mark says, fits in a freaking backpack. We had a little more because we used um, external wireless mics. And, you know, I, I just maybe went a little overboard on a couple of the pieces of gear. But for anything else anyone wants to do, this is it. There is no other special piece of gear. It's simply software. And I remember before we left and we got the, the software, I, I laid three of these out on my kitchen table. And I just, like, tried it. I went, I clicked through put some graphics, okay, camera to camera, okay, yeah, I got this, put it away, and that was it. I used it like once before we left, and that was it. Um, so I wanna, if I could jump to just another scenario, the NAM show is something that we've covered since January of 2013. We used to have these big cameras, and a couple years ago, or three years ago, 
um, something happened with one of the big cameras. And, and one of the guys got kind of upset and he said, this is BS. You should just get like iPads and wireless mics and put little kits together in a Pelican case like that little one you have there. And I thought, that's the stupidest freaking thing, Mike, I've ever heard. What do you, you know, that will look so unprofessional. And, you know, I, my head was just totally in the wrong place. And then a year later, here we are. I thought, you know, I think this actually is a great idea. Things changed, the perception of gear changed and all that, and that's what we started doing. So at the NAMM show, we have a booth where I'm anchored most of the time, and we schedule guests that, that come all day. They come, they do interviews with me, and then I have three other correspondent teams that are mobile with this and a wireless microphone that has a USB mic. Do I have one of those? Yes, I do. It's a USB mic but then you get this apple adapter so that the lightning jack goes right into there now you got a cool handheld mic it's got the drum talk tv flag on it and you're a reporter you're a media company and we were also able to live stream. all of that was live streamed four of us could be doing interviews at the same time in different parts of the anaheim convention center it's all being streamed live to our Facebook page and then uh, systematically gets put on our other channels as well. And if you want, you can stream to LinkedIn, you can stream to uh, YouTube, it's it's anything. Um, and what was I leaving out? I thought of something and now I forgot. Oh, and then we would be able to uh, stream performances, multi-camera shoots of, like I would say, um, hey, uh, Aaron Spears is doing a thing at the, Zildjian booth or whatever. One, three of you go over there. The three cameras, one of them's doing the switching and the other two are getting the other angles. It's amazing. You folks have got to take advantage of this, whether it's for teaching, whether it's for streaming your shows or your rehearsals or behind the scenes. People love behind the scenes things with musicians. Film behind the scenes stuff. If you guys tracking, mixing and trying different things the guitar player taking 13 stabs at a solo and everyone else yelling at him come on get it you know just have fun with it and it, we talk about the internet being our window to the world switcher studio puts that production truck in your hand so that it's not just it's not just video it's video production it, it truly is and you don't have to have ever done video editing or video production before you just you don't even need that that skill yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, uh, I mean, there's so many great little takeaways from this, uh, you know, conversation and, you know, again, I appreciate you being, being on and, and being willing to do this. Um, you know, there's not, as, there's not very many people out there that you have access to that have the background in music, uh, like you do, as well as the, the background in social media, as well as background in video production, you know, so you sort of have, uh, you know, done it all, uh, you know, which is really, really nice. So, um, you know, I appreciate you being on. Um, as far as, uh, you know, Drum Talk TV, uh, you know, social media, is there, is there, you know, where can people find you, um, you know, find out more about you and what you do? Thanks. So you could find Drum Talk TV on drumtalktv.com. Our social sites are on, so if you just look up Drum Talk TV on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, and for my social media, if anyone's interested in learning more about social media that really works and not a lot of the bunk that's out there, if you, a friend of mine says, never take advice from someone who hasn't done what you want to do. I've built a following of over a million people, 100% organically, with my own strategies. If you want to learn about that, go to advancedsocialmarketing.com, and uh, you can learn all about what I offer um, and uh, I'd, I'd love to meet people who are serious about what they do and want to get serious about how they do it. That's what I teach. Perfect. Well, um, again, Dan, I appreciate you uh, being on and, and talking to people about how uh, they can leverage a tool like Switch Studio to, uh, you know, to in, in the music business as musicians, you know, for teaching. Uh, you know, for education, for monetization, uh, you know, et cetera. So appreciate you being on. Uh, thank you so much for taking some time. Uh, you know, as always, uh, you guys can follow us at Switcher Video uh, on all the social channels. 
uh, switcherstudio.com for more information on uh, the platform. We have a free 14 day trial, um, you know, and uh, I just appreciate you, uh, appreciate you being here. Thank you very much, Mark. Always happy to talk about it. It's a great product. All right. Uh, thanks a lot. Until next time, uh, Switcher Studio fans, uh, we will uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody. What's six times more engaging than video? Live video. Switcher Studio lets you create amazing live video. Switch angles, add graphics, invite guests, all on iPhones and iPads, and stream it anywhere. Start your free trial at switcherstudio.com.